What's up guys and welcome back to the DIY HVAC Guy YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to bend copper pipe and an alternative to brazing. So we're going to show you how to do it. It makes this job so much easier. Um, probably not great for a DIYer, but this is still really cool information to, uh, to know about. So we've got a piece of three quarter pipe and what we're going to be using is the Hillmore uh, bender tool. I just got this, I'm really excited to uh, test it out. So you've probably seen my other bending tool that I've used. Um, this one is a lot superior. It has a bunch of really cool features. So to start with, on my other tool that was just a cheapy like $80 tool, you had to use a uh, wing nut or a wing bolt to tighten this in place. And as you can see, this one makes it super easy. It just has a little uh, ball bearing that keeps this in place, which makes it really easy. And you simply grab the size that you want, slip it on the bottom, and you can bend your tool with this ratcheting device. And then this little thing lets it out, which is super easy. Um, it'll make bending pipe a lot quicker and more enjoyable to do. So pretty much all you do is set this in place. We're gonna do a 90 degree bend here. Really smooth uh, movements on the ratcheting. The, the cheap one that I've got, it wouldn't grab sometimes. So this one is, so far, it's just really easy to use. Really nice. And there we have it. I think you can even do more than a 90, but as you can tell, that's a 90. And literally all we do is pull this down and it completely lets off and then we'll just pull this pipe out and there we have it a little bit more than 90 um, you'll have these little grooves here which is fine as long as you don't have kinks that's what we're as long as the refrigerant will flow in there nicely that's what we're after so the only thing we're gonna be needing for this condensing unit that we're doing is this 90. So now we'll get into the crimper tool and we'll show you how to do that whole process. All right, so on our condensing unit, unfortunately, um, they have not started to engineer these without this little bell. So if we cut this right here at the bell, we're given just enough room to slip this all the way in and our O-ring will be the crimp will be passed where it's supposed to be. So we're gonna do it on this system. We're going to take some electrical tape and we're gonna put it here so that it matches this bell and we'll get a straight cut all the way around here. Now what we have to do is we have to remove these two um, 516 screws and slide this over so that we'll have enough room for our tool to slip in right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So we've got some additional room here. Should be able to slip that all the way around. Now we're gonna take our electrical tape. And this will also protect this male portion from getting messed up while we uh, run that tool around it. And we're gonna start it right here like it got started there. Perfect. So we're gonna go back and forth. And when we crank this down, we're gonna make sure we do this in different places so it doesn't deform this pipe. Here we have it. Right where it starts to taper down is where we got it cut. And as you can see, there's no damage to the mail piece. So we're gonna go ahead and take our tape off. And then we're gonna scotch bright this and we're gonna deburr it to make sure that this outside edge does not mess up our O-ring. So this is the RLS rapid locking system. This kit, 
is definitely not on the cheap end, um, but you can find these on True Tech Tools if you're interested. If you're in this trade, it makes this process so much easier. Um, so you, it comes with the battery charger, comes with all of the jaws except for three quarter, ironically, the one that we're gonna be using today. And basically they make it really easy. You simply pop this out, you slide the jaws into place, and then it locks back into place. You just slide it over your fitting. And as you can see, it has these grooves that you just line up and then it crimps it in place. Now, the rest of this kit, it comes with the deburring tool. So this we'll use on the inside and the outside of our pipe to make sure it's smooth and that it does not mess up this little O-ring that's inside here. And then we have our scotch pipe pad. We'll just use this to clean the surface, make sure that it's perfectly clean. And then we have our marking tool. So we would take our pipe, line it up with the three quarter one, which is right here. We butt it all the way up to it. And then we take the Sharpie that's included, an RLS Sharpie. So if we mark this right here, that's gonna be the depth that we need. So as you can see, we're just a little bit shy, but I think we'll be okay. I've seen uh, several people do this. As long as the O-ring is on the other end, we should be okay. So what we're gonna do to start with is we're gonna take our deburring tool and we're just gonna run this a few times on the inside. And then we're gonna make sure that all that not staying in there. Need a little bit more here. Next, what we're going to do is take our fitting and we're going to make sure that the inside of our fitting is nice and clean, that there's no contaminants. And we're simply going to slide this over. like that and now we are ready to crimp so what we've done here is we took this piece off but really you don't have to we can tilt it up and we're going to use our tool from the bottom and we're going to crimp it here so we're going to slide our tool on push this into place and then i'm going to push this against it while i'm doing this Make sure you hold the trigger until it stops. Then you can let off the jaws. And if you want to, you can also set this back in place and do it again. Just like that. That's the finished crimp there. I would have liked to get it a little bit closer here, but this is primarily what's holding our piece in place. And the seal is simply sealing it to the pipe. So next we'll go ahead and button everything up here on the unit, get it uh, to where we need it. And then we'll go ahead and do this um, liquid side as well. Okay, so we've got our three eighths on. This is fully seated. As you can see that little groove is where the, um, where the pipe stops. So this seal is towards the end of the, the stub here. So all we're gonna do is from the bottom, because as you can see the service valve, this little port here for our gauges is in the way. So we're gonna have to rotate this till it's here so that it's clearing this. Now you wanna just make sure that your grooves are exactly over these two notches and that it's fully seated. And then all you do is press the trigger and make sure you hold it until everything stops. All right, easy as that. Now I Got see the why new you're master. so excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> master in training. So this piece is already cleaned up. So what we're gonna go ahead and do 
is we're gonna slide this on all the way. All the way until it hits that little indention there. It'll stop by itself. And now we're just gonna slide this, not all the way to the O-ring, but just to where we can see what our depth needs to be. So we're gonna cut our pipe right here. And then we'll get it cleaned up with our Scotch-Brite and D-Bird. So what we'll do is take this one out. And we'll slide it right up in. Just like that. Both of them are in all the way. Got it right where we want it. So before we put this on where it's gonna be permanently, we're gonna take this and we're gonna mark both of our pipes. Okay, so let's go ahead and slip this one on. Just like that, our mark is way down there. We can still see it. And then this guy, we're just gonna slide it straight up. And as you can see, we hit our mark there. It's exactly where we want it. So let's go ahead and grab our tool and get these crimped. Okay, we're right where we want it. Joint number one and joint number two. That's it. Now, once these are crimped, what we can also do is there's a tool that we'll put here to make sure that it's fully crimped. So as you can see, three quarter, this will not fit over it. But right here on each side of the groove, this will fit. So that's how you check your joints and make sure that they're all good. There we go. So we're on our mark there. Slip these over. And there's that one. So we'll test it with our three quarter tester. Good to go. Now, something to note when you're doing these is you can push this past that little groove. So it's important that you put the line and you make sure that the line is met and it's not past it in too far so we've got that one fitted so we'll go ahead and slide this one up except we're going to mark it first okay so that one's on our mark there and this guy will go right here so we'll make sure that we go up to our mark Just like that. Boom. Take our tester. Three eighths is right here. All right, so we got our 7 8 to 3 8 reducer. And same thing here, except this is a lot easier to work with. Um, the coil is out of the cased cabinet. So same thing. So we got that marked. So we're gonna take 
this guy. Slip it straight on. Okay, it stopped where we wanted it. I'm gonna put our 7 8 jaws on it. Jeez. Boom. Dunzo. Alright guys, so we've got our nitrogen hooked up to our gauges that we will be replacing very soon. <laughs> we're just over 400 um, PSI, so we're going to give this about probably 30 minutes or so. If we have not dropped, then we know that all of our press fittings are good. Again, zero nitrogen flow, zero brazing, so it's a pretty awesome thing to have very clean look with the fittings. So our pressures have been sitting for over an hour now and we're exactly where we left it, uh, just over 400. And I actually just went through and sprayed all of the fittings down and I saw zero bubbles. So we are good to go ahead and pull our vacuum. Well, it's as easy as that folks. Um, really, really nice tool. Again, this is not for your average DIYer. If you're looking to purchase this tool and you're in the trade, a couple of things to be mindful of is this kit does not come with the three quarter jaws uh, for whatever reason. I had to purchase these ones separate. They come with three eighths, half inch, five eighths, and seven eighths, and inch and an eighth, which is really nice. Um, occasionally I'll work on inch and an eighth stuff. But overall, really nice kit. I think this is going to be a real game changer. Again, in terms of insurance, in terms of the liability of not having a flame in the home. So I hope you guys found this video informative. If so, leave it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Until next time, you guys be safe and we'll catch you on the next one. Later.